Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of all of us here at GRIFE, I welcome you to our Discover GRIFE webinar series, where we use this platform as a way of sharing with you various topics relating to our product and services. I'd like to thank all of you for your continuous support for our webinar series. And today, we are glad that we have many participants joining us from many countries across APEC. For today's topic, we will be presenting to you our key product portfolio, which is our steel drums. And we'll be sharing with you how these drums are being manufactured. My name is Wee Guan, Commercial Manager at Grive Singapore, responsible for commercial activities in Singapore. And I'll be both your presenter and moderator for this afternoon. Before we start, just some housekeeping items that I'd like to share with you. Firstly, I would like to inform you that we'll be doing a live recording of this session for our internal record and for future training purposes. Next, during the course of our presentation, should you have any question on any part of our presentation, feel free to look for the question button on your screen, click on it, send us your question, and we'll try to answer them during our Q&A session. Next, I'll be presenting, introducing our presenters for today. First, we have Alan, our Global Product Manager for Steel Drums, based in France. He'll be sharing with you our new drum innovation and some of our value proposition for choosing drive drums. Next, we have Johnny, he's based in Singapore, is our Operation Manager as well, safety, in charge of uh, safety for APEC. Next to Johnny, we have Guo Wei, our Sustainability and Operation Director, who is based in China. Both of them will jointly walk you through our entire drum manufacturing process. Joining them will be Jacqueline, QA manager based in Singapore, to share some of the topics relating to the quality process. The agendas for today will be myself starting off with the steel drum description, and then I'll pass on to the rest of the presenter for the remaining, remaining parts, which is how the drum is made drive value proposition, and then we'll end with a Q&A. So let's begin our presentation. In the area of steel drums, we see there are many types of specification in the market, but today we'll be just focusing only on cylindrical drums. We do see the 216 liters type drum, both type head and open head, as the most commonly used by customer worldwide. We call them large drums, and it follows a global standard in terms of the internal diameter. Besides the large drums, we also offer, offer a wide range of other small size, which we call small and intermediate drums. Next, we will look into the different drums capacities. As you can see from the figures below, uh, you have one group on the left hand side. These are what we call the small medium drums. It's clearly not a uh, standard packaging. Every country and manufacturer will have its own standard. And in the market, we can find from the smallest at 20 liters to the biggest at 160 liters. In Singapore, we do manufacture this type of drums from 20 to 120 liters. This can be exported to regions around in APEC to support their local markets. On the right hand side, the next category will be the large drums, which has a global standard of internal diameter. The 216 liters capacity is the most commonly used, and the drum capacity can be increased through the use of different height of drum. 260 liter is our standard drum offering throughout all Grive location in APEC. So now let, let us look into the different types of drum opening. There are mainly two types of opening, tight head, which has two bung holes, is used mainly for liquid application. And the open head type, which use a locking ring, are mostly used for solid and paste, or other products with high viscosity like paints. In the open head category, while most suppliers in the market supply can, can only do UN solid certified drums, Grive do offer an ISO open head type, which is UN certified for liquid. From the drums opening, let us now look into the internal of drums. 
The most basic type of drum is the plain drum, which will be suitable for products which are non-aggressive and are chemically compatible with bare steel. One such product will be the lubricants. For products which are more aggressive, we do have a wide range of different internal coatings, which I will share in the next slide, providing good mechanical performance and chemical compatibility with the product. Next, we also have internal plastics and antiseptic bag protection solution for use with the drums, such as for the tomato paste market. Lastly, we have the composite drum, which is basically a plastic drum inside the steel drum, which when combined will give a high chemical and mechanical performance, especially suitable for high corrosive product. We have both Malaysia and China plant producing this type of drum. Next, let me share with you more on the internal linings. On the internal linings, over the years, we have developed many types of lining suitable for different types of products. The three main types are phenolic, which is suitable for exit, epoxy phenolic for alkaline, and lastly, phenoxy phenolic, which has been developed for specific products. Most of them are FDA approved for food and below certain limit of BPA. As you know that in the food industry, over the years, it has become more and more stringent, especially segments like for food, baby food. So with that, we have also developed new linings, which are BPA not intended. In APEC, the most commonly used linings are the RDL44, RDL50, and in Singapore, we have also started supplying RDL100, which is BPA not intended. For our customers with any new products, we have also developed a tool in the form of questionnaire which our engineer can use your input to advise the most suitable linings for your packaging needs. This tool is not only available for steel drum, but also for other materials such as plastic subscript as well. Next. Beside the steel drum, we have also other specialty drums for specific application. The first picture on the left that you see, that's the conical drum. This is predominantly used in the tomato and fruit paste industry in Europe. As you can see in the picture, it is conical in shape and can be stacked on one another. One key advantage that our overseas customers have experienced is the saving of shipment costs due to the way these drums can be stacked and delivered. Next up, we also have a range of stainless steel drums for specific applications such as in food, pharma and nuclear waste application. Our plant in Vietnam do manufacture this stainless steel with gauges from 1 mm to 1.4 mm gauges, and they are in 216 liters volume. We also have, we also import salvage drum from UK and US for, hand, for use in handling damage hazardous packaging. Lastly, we have the bitumen drums, which is used specifically to hold bitumen used for making ropes. This type of drum is very light and with only one bung hole. And we are the only supplier of such drums in Singapore. So what are the materials used for making drums? As the name implies, 99% is made of steel. In most cases, other than the stainless steel, it's made of coral steel for top, bottom, and body. As for the closure system, it is made up of galvanized steel. While the rest of the components are the paint, ink, internal lining, and gasket. Yeah. So at this point, I'd like to hand over the presentation over to Alan. He will share with you some new drum developments. Over to you, Alan. Yeah, thank you, uh, Wigwan. So let's talk now a bit about the steel drum customization. So as you can see here on the picture, the basic customization starts from the color of the drum. Of course, as you know, we are painting the drum, so we can select the colors. Uh, so on the drums, we can put uh, three different colors on the body, uh, one color per, per band, and we can uh, uh, also paint uh, the top and the bottom uh, with the different colors. Uh, besides the paint, we have also the screening capacity. So with the screening, we can uh, print uh, e simple logos or simple text uh, on the body or on the top. 
Uh, and we have uh, two processes for screening. We have what we call the simple screening, which allow us to, to print one color per band. And we have developed recently what we call the complex screening, uh, where we can uh, print two different colors per band, as you can see on the white and the black drums in the middle. Uh, on top of uh, this uh, simple decoration, we also recently developed in Europe uh, what we call the digital printing process. So it is a process where we can print on the body any kind of image, any kind of photo, uh, and to get a very nice final drums, as you can see on the two drums on the right. So let's now see a little bit more in detail uh, the process of digital printing. So uh, when we produce a traditional drum, we first produce the drums, and at the end of the production, we, print, we paint and we screen the drums. Uh, for the printed drums, it's uh, completely different. Uh, we start from a white uh, sheet that uh, we paint with a roller coating process. Uh, when we get the white uh, sheet, we just print this white sheet with a huge inkjet printer. And to get the final printing, as you can see on the, on the bottom left, uh, directly on the sheet, steel sheets, and then we use this printed sheet directly on the drum line to produce the drums. And at the end of the production, uh, we protect the printing with an external varnish to have a very good protection and uh, not to damage the print. So it's a new technology uh, uh, which has been developed in Europe and that uh, we will uh, start uh, very soon uh, in other regions of the world. Next slide, please. In terms of uh, customization, we are also using different uh, closure uh, system, uh, and uh, we are mainly using uh, Trasher uh, closure systems, which is which is very well known uh, today, and which uh, Trasher belongs to Grif. Uh, we are using uh, plugs, uh, plain uh, plugs or lacquered plugs. Uh, and what is very important to understand is that uh, the linings we are using for the plugs are exactly the same as the linings we are using for the drums. So there is no compatibility issues uh, between the body and the plugs. Uh, we are using, of course, uh, the bunks from Trasher, which are equipped with the double washer system, the 4S system, uh, which gives a good uh, safety, uh, mainly for UN approvals, because we have uh, two uh, washers to make sure the drums are tight. Uh, we are using, of course, uh, all the caps range from Trasher, which are steel caps and plastic caps, uh, with or without the venting systems, uh, depending on the, on the products you are filling. And uh, recently, Trasher has developed a full range of uh, tamper-evident cap seals uh, to avoid counterfeit products. And so we are using also these uh, solutions, means uh, QR codes, UV ink, embossed logo, uh, to avoid uh, problems with uh, counterfeited products. Uh, now I will give the floor to uh, Johnny for, to explain a little bit more how we produce a steel drum. So let me go through you your steel drum production. The steel drum production comprises of three critical assembly operations, one main assembly line and uh, with two sub assembly. So the decoding line, uh, which transform the coil material into the body sheet and disc. And then the press line or end forming, um, make the disc into tops and bottom. Then the main line will assemble all these components together, paint them with the color that you want for streaming. So let me go through the details of these operations. For the coiling line, all the coral steels come in coil form, which can weigh as much as 30 metric tons per coil. We then process them into body sheets and stack them in orderly manner. And also, we produce the disc. Likewise, we stack them there. Uh, these are precision cutting that makes the raw material for making a good drum. Next. For ends forming, uh, every disc of different gauges are uh, stacked into the line. We have the uh, tops and bottoms end press. So the bottoms, these are the bottoms who make the disc embossing. And then we have the top who punch the two holes who makes the opening of the drum. 
After that, we have the flanging, which insert the tops uh, and make you the screws. Next. Okay, once the main assembly line, the body sheet are rolled into um, drum form with the defined diameters with the correct overlap. Then welding will take place and high current fuses the selected material together. This is a critical process for checking the welding operations. I now let Jacqueline explain a bit on the welding quality. Jacqueline, please. Thank you, Johnny. On well quality tests, this is carried out using a special machine that punches dents in the seam well. To determine good quality well, the well should crack without separation of overlap. It is one of the key important destructive quality tests for production of steel drop, especially DG feeling good. This is to ensure protection of our environment as well as assurance of the product quality. Back to you, Johnny. Thank you, Jacqueline. So once the well body shell is done, the next step is to do body forming. Okay, we have flanging, beadings, and corrugation. The flange is important to provide enough material for seaming operation later, which I'll show you, to ensure the drum are properly sealed. And beading and corrugation provide mechanical strength for the drum. Next, I will show you the video. So this video shows the forming operation. Um, okay, okay, this is the flanging. The video is not moving. Okay, so this is a flanging operation, which can uh, do the top and bottom flange. Then followed by a beater. And now you can see the drums is divided at three bands, giving extra mechanical strength. And followed by corrugation. Okay, so after body forming line, now the drum shell is ready to be seamed with the top and bottom. These mechanical operations roll the top, the body and the ends together into seam corners, which then seal up the drum to prevent leakage. A good seaming interlock is very important for a drum to function correctly. Next, I'll pass to Kowei to continue the process. Kowei, please. Thank you, Johnny. So now your drum is fully assembled. Of course, you want your drum in, prefer, in your preferred color. So in this video, we're showing how we spray paint a single color drum. We can do the same for multiple color drum as well. The paint we use at Grife complies with all environmental regulations. At Grife, we ban the use of heavy metals. We also use RTO or water-based paint to reduce solvent emissions. Uh, next slide, please. A wide range of filling chemicals require the drum to have internal coating to protect the chemicals from. So in this video, we're showing how we spray paint the coating into the body shell before the final assembly. The coating consists of resins with different chemical resistance, and there's a various type of resins you can choose from as introduced by Rigon before. Next. At the end of the line, the treasure plug can be applied to the drum automatically. If the drum has internal coating, so does the plugs to be consistent with the drum body. Then open high drums are closed with locking rings. Next, please. Each drum goes through the helium tester. Our helium tester can detect very small quantity of helium gas. Here, I will invite Jacqueline to share more details. Thank you, Go away. Before a drum can be checked in the leak tester, a dose of helium must be injected into the drum. After the closure's insertion, drum with helium is then transferred to an automatic leak tester, guarantees that the whole drum is tested, including the closures. The task of the leak tester is to detect and separate the leaking drums. It is a tool to provide assurance of product quality, ensure safety and protection of our environment. Over to you, Kowei. Thank you, Jacqueline. So besides the color on the drum, you can also have your company logo, pictures, or text printed on the drum through a process called silk screening. We can do it on the body or the top. Next, please. 
So now the drum is made, it's ready for transportation. We can load the drum one by one into a trailer or palletize them and ship as one unit. So here we're demonstrating a automatic palletizing system. Now I'll pass on to Jacqueline to share more information with you. Jacqueline? Yes, thanks, Galway. Our steel drums are fit with treasure for air closure. They are tested according to the UN Transport of Dangerous Good Model Regulation. Treasure for air closures guarantee leak performance, proof performance, even under the most demanding condition. Consistently passing the UN drop test at height of 1.8 meter, a simulation of estimate 3 meter stack height. Our next presenter, Ellen, shall lead you through the next few slides. Thank you. Clean. So uh, let's see now why why we're choosing rice. So the first uh, topic I would like to explain here is that we have the largest range of steel drums on the market, as uh, we already explained a little bit before. Uh, we have the full range of standard drums, tight head, open head, but we have also a full range of uh, small and intermediate uh, drums. We have uh, many different what we call specialties, like uh, stainless steel drums, over drums, composite drums, bitumen drums. We are also by, by far the leader uh, on the conical drums that we did not explain before. The conical drums is a specific drum, uh, which is uh, for the food industry and mainly for the tomato and the food juice business, which is a huge and increasing market. Next slide, please. Uh, the big uh, advantage to work with Graf is also to have a standardization process. So if you are uh, global customers, we can guarantee to have exactly the same large drums everywhere on the globe with exactly the same drum specifications, the same external colors, the same internal linings that we are producing ourselves, uh, the same pressure closing systems, and of course, the same branding. Uh, so you, you have a guarantee to have exactly the same drum everywhere. Next slide. Uh, on top of the standard uh, products, uh, we have developed a lot of uh, dedicated solutions. And here you have just some examples. Uh, we have developed uh, for major customers uh, different automatic unloading systems. Uh, with a specific uh, boxes or standard trailers uh, with a automatization made by a robot. Uh, we have developed uh, what we call the clean drum process, uh, which is a specific quality process to guarantee that the drums are, are as clean as possible. And it is a big trend today on the market. Uh, we have the, what we call the KDD, which stands for knockdown drums. Uh, which basically allow us to deliver uh, drum parts uh, to uh, remote locations where there is no drum producer uh, very close. And so instead of uh, delivering uh, finished drums, which cost a lot in terms of transport cost, we can deliver parts and we can deliver many, many drums in an ISO container. And so we assemble the drums with a very small line just uh, close to your plant. We have a full vendor inventory management system, uh, which starts from uh, basically uh, consignment stock up to a full management of your uh, packaging, uh, with the graph employees working at your locations and managing the packaging. So they are ordering the drums to uh, suppliers, they are receiving the drums, making the quality control, entering the stock in your ERP system. So they are really managing all the packaging. And uh, uh, another one, which is uh, really uh, today uh, a big trend, is uh, all the track and trace systems. So we have developed different techniques uh, to make sure you have a good traceability of the drums based on the QR code, barcode, labels, uh, inkjet, or whatever. And so that we have a full range of solutions today. Next slide. Uh, Grif uh, for steel drums is by far the largest footprint uh, on the road to, to serve you everywhere. So you can see here the map. Uh, we have uh, 72 large drum plants uh, all over the world. We have 22 small drum plants. Uh, we are present in more than 40 countries, but of course we can also deliver in the countries around. So this uh, global footprint allows us to, to give you uh, very good backup solutions 
And if we have one problem with one plant, we have always two or three other plants uh, ready to deliver uh, your, your plant. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of uh, quality and safety, Jacqueline explained you already some topics. Uh, just here are some examples. Uh, we, most of our plants are equipped with a germ helium tester, which is a top uh, technology uh, to detect uh, any tightness uh, problem for the drums. Uh, Graph is uh, the only one having developed a very specific bottom, steel bottom, what we call a standard dome bottom. Uh, the target of uh, this uh, bottom is to avoid stress cracking, mainly when you are going to very light drums. Uh, and during transportation, you have a lot of vibrations which can create a steel cracking. And so with a standard bottom, we can uh, avoid uh, this problem. We have, you have seen uh, plenty of uh, decorations uh, systems up to the digital printing. We have the BPA uh, or the BPA NIA linings and a, a full range of different linings, etc. So uh, our offer is to give you all this quality and safety policy on the global level. We have the best practice that we can share between our plans. As explained already by uh, Wigwan, we have the packaging advice, which is available everywhere. So if you have a new product you want to develop and you don't know which packaging, you can use it. Of course, innovation uh, is something very important for Graph, and we are uh, focusing on a, a new uh, product. And uh, we have also uh, plenty of different systems to measure our quality and our service. And two of them are the Customer Service Index and the Net Promoter Score that we are regularly using to uh, measure our performance. Next slide. And uh, finally, the last point is that we are a big group with a uh, big financial strength. And so we are able to invest uh, in a new plans when it's necessary uh, to follow our customers. So here you have uh, the three last examples from last year. Uh, we have built uh, a new drum plant in Saudi Arabia uh, to follow a big chemical customer starting a new plant in this region. And so the, this plant is dedicated to this customer. Uh, we started also a new plant in Russia producing large drums, but IBCs as well. And we implement uh, this plant in the middle of a new industrial area close to Moscow, again, to follow our customers. And the last uh, plant we built was uh, in Spain. Uh, as I explained before, the tomato business is a growing market. And so we decided to invest in a brand new plant just in the middle of the tomato field in Spain to be very close to our customers. Uh, now uh, I give the floor back to Wigwan to conclude this webinar. Thanks, Alan. I hope our presentation has given you a better insight on our job manufacturing processes as well as our capabilities. So, Please allow me to summarize our value proposition in this one last slide. As I presented earlier, Grife not only offers a full range of drums, but together with our global footprint and innovation solution, you can definitely find a Grife product that suits your needs and provides support at any of your global locations. As shared by Jacqueline, quality inspections are built into our manufacturing processes so that you can be sure that every drum that leaves Grife are of good quality and functional. And we have internal quality management system, which dictates that we will re respond fast and provide timely resolution for all our customers. Leveraging on Grife global footprint and resources, we can provide continuous support to your company needs in terms of servicing you globally, providing single point of contact, offering expert advice on your packaging needs, and most importantly, to be able to provide our customer supply assurance through our business continuity planning. Last but not least, sustainability. Sustainability has always been a top priority in Grife. As a socially responsible corporate citizen, we are fully committed to provide innovative packaging solution in the most sustain sustainable way. We can also help our customers to reduce carbon footprint through our green tool assessment tool. 
Our effort and standards in sustainability has been widely recognized within our industry. One such example would be the Go Award, which we have consist consistently achieved for EcoVardis for the past few years. So on this note, we have come to an end for this afternoon's presentation. And for the last part, we will take some time for Q&A session. Let me just remind you um, to post a question. Please look for the question button on your screen, type in your question and press the send button. And we'll try to answer them at the end of our at the Q&A session. Days before the event, we have already started receiving some of your questions. So I'll start the ball rolling with some of these questions. So the first question uh, comes from our customers in China, and this one will be addressed by Liu. So uh, Liu, the customers is, um, wanted us to give an update on our steel drum recycling network and also an update on our back in drum study and uh, when is the commercial implementation status. Uh, thank you, Wei Guan. And the first of the question is uh, the steel drum recycling network update in China. Um, the answer is so far Graph are working, it's working with the third party on dealing with those kind of a requirement from customer side. And uh, because um, collecting recycled drum need a local government certification and authorization, as well as uh, needs the quota and uh, location is and the location, it's, um, it's requirement uh, is it's quite different for the third party. So we will talk uh, about this thing, uh, about this uh, those uh, things case by case. Um, that, that's the first one. Second one about the back in drum feasibility study and commercialized implementation studies. And uh, actually, this uh, the answer for this one is uh, the back in drum is still on studying, and um, we expect it will shoot in the market not too long. Uh, Thank you, Wei Guan. Okay, thanks. Next, we have a technical question and I will put it to Huawei to answer. The question is, will, will the inter, inner coating affect the well, well seam line? Uh, thanks, Wei Guan. So the welding line is not a problem for applying the inner coatings. Uh, first of all, the welding line steps are very shallow. We control it very well. At, uh, at the welding process. And secondly, at the spraying process, we make sure we spray enough thickness to cover every part of the drum. So the, the welding line is not gonna be exposed at all. And then if the customer really needs, we can flatten the weld line before applying internal coating as well. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Bowie. Um, the next question will be also uh, for you because it's regarding sustainability. So the customers sure. would like to know uh, how we manage sustainability in APEC, and is there any recent innovation by Grife? Okay, so Grife globally we care deeply about sustainability. We have many initiatives such as uh, uh, energy per drum reduction, waste diversion project. So at APEC, with following all these global initiatives, uh, we're doing exceptionally well with the waste diversion. Our global goal is less than 10% of the total waste going to landfill. And this number at APEC is around 1%. So we're doing an excellent job. Uh, most recently, we're working on switching over to water-based paint. Uh, compared to the traditionally solvent-based paint, water-based paint can reduce solvent emission by over 70%. Every plant in China has tested this capability. And in our Zhuhai plant, we're offering this commercially already. Back to you. Yeah. Next, next question is also a uh, similar uh, typical uh, anchor question. I will put forth to Alan to answer. So the question from the customer will be, uh, what are the key factors to consider if we were to wish to change the thickness of drums? What to you, Alan? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, there are two main points to be considered. Uh, the first point is the type of product you are filling in the drum, of course. Uh, for dangerous goods, uh, we need a UN approval, and uh, when you need a UN approval, of course, the drums have to uh, resist and to stand to some mechanical performance. 
And so you cannot go down to uh, very light uh, drums for very dangerous products. So it depends on the danger level of your product. Uh, and uh, sometimes you will you will even need if you have, for instance, uh, X products, which is a group one, which are the most dangerous products with a high density. Yeah, you will need to uh, to use heavy heavier drums. Uh, now, if you have non-dangerous products or low dangerous products such as uh, lubricants, uh, basic solvents, and so on, uh, most of the time you can move down to at least 0.8 millimeter for the for the body. Uh, and so you can use uh, light, uh, light drums. Uh, so lube is a very good example. We clearly see today on the market a big trend in the lubricant industry uh, to move down to a 0.8 millimeter all around. It means uh, eight, eight, what we call the 888 drums. That's really becoming the standard on the market. Uh, the second point to be considered is the transportation, of course. If you have very bad transport condition uh, on a very difficult roads, uh, even if the drums in 0.8 is good enough, uh, you can damage the drums because of the transport condition. And then maybe you should consider to keep um, one millimeter for the top and bottom. And sometimes it's a, if it is a very long way to go to your final uh, customers, uh, maybe you should keep a 0.9 or one millimeter drum. But if you are in a normal condition, 0.8 drums is really becoming the standard on the market. Okay. Thank you, Alan. The next, question, the next question I have, um, we can look at it in uh, two, two levels. Okay. The question is, how does COVID affect the price and demand of steel? Uh, this comes from our uh, Malaysia customers. So I will invite Rachel to share uh, within the Malaysia market context as well. Then uh, we will follow by uh, Chin Yang to share on the, on the general uh, price and demand of the steel drum in the, uh, for the general market. Over to you, Rachel. Thank you, Iguan. Uh, during the Malaysia movement control or uh, orders period, uh, the Malaysia steel demand was dropped quite significant uh, as the steel mainly supply to the, our automotive market. Therefore, the steel price is slightly in the downtrend. But the steel mill are controlling and lowering on their supply to the market in order to maintain the price level. So due to, due to this, uh, the steel price are on the way in the uptrend. In fact, uh, already in a gone up in the APEC region. So um, if this is, a, this is also supported by the demand recovery and improving uh, from the automotive industry. Thus, uh, we continue to expect the seasonal pressure will return and the market see further the price uptrend and in the near terms. I pass on to Ching Yang. Thank you, Rachel. So, my name is Ching Yang. So, I, I'm responsible for the Southeast Asia uh, businesses. And uh, thank you for that question. I think, uh, in so far as uh, steel material is concerned, it is one of the most uh, important ingredient in our steel drum making, uh, obviously. And uh, in the beginning of the COVID situation, uh, the demand plummeted, and I think uh, uh, therefore it affected uh, the supply and demand structure very uh, badly. And, and as things progresses, I think all of us know that uh, China has recovered, and uh, at this moment in time has recovered quite, quite well, and uh, the demand has gone back to normal. Uh, but then on the on the sub supply side, uh, from the raw material perspective, uh, there are also some uh, underlying issues with regards to maybe uh, uh, iron ore and uh, cooking coke uh, in terms of the steel making ingredients that is causing a bit of a disturbance to the market. Uh, but overall, uh, with uh, in in terms of the last six months, we see a downward uh, trend in terms of uh, steel costs. And as what uh, Rachel also mentioned just uh, a while ago. Uh, the steel cost has now recovered. And in fact, as, as, as we speak, uh, uh, the pro forward projection is that uh, the steel cost is continued on uptrend. Uh, and with the uh, moderation of the supply side, uh, there's also a little bit of a balancing in terms of supply and demand. So we do foresee that uh, the impact coming from COVID uh, is already been neglected. And going forward future, especially in calendar Q4, we will see that the steel cost will escalate uh, to quite a significant level. 
And uh, I think uh, in so far as the uh, cost con contain is concerned, I think uh, from Grant's perspective, we're, we're containing our cost as much as we can. I think we have a lot of uh, uh, discussion with a lot of our customers, and I'm sure a lot of our customers do face a lot of cost pressure as well. And still, it's not the only one. There's also other costs uh, incurred, including those that we usually don't come into the picture, including insurance, including logistics, and so on. So I think uh, we are still uh, holding it and uh, making sure that we contain our costs within the Grife uh, businesses. Uh, but I, I'm sure uh, the, the uh, cost pressure will, will come to a level where we need to also discuss this with the customer. So I hope that answers your questions. Yeah, back to you, uh, Wiguan. Yeah. So uh, in the context of this question, uh, one of our customers would want to know what are Grife's measure to stay competitive in the current competitive market. So maybe, Chinya, can I invite you to share on this? Uh, sure, yeah, thanks for that question as well. I think uh, we all know uh, in terms of the market condition, uh, Asia Pacific is quite different from North America as well as in U Europe. Uh, and Drive, uh, we have operated in this uh, environment uh, for a long time. And uh, we do know that uh, there's a lot of cost pressure. And uh, from Grice's perspective is that uh, given the, the experience that we had uh, over the COVID-19 situation, particularly this really surfaced the level of commitment, commitment that we have to our customers. Uh, and if we were to say from a China perspective, from our uh, Malaysia, from Singapore, from Vietnam perspective, uh, our plan has never uh, been stopped in uh, supplying to our customer. And uh, this is one of the measure, or this is one of the value proposition that we continue to give to the customer uh, over and above in terms of the cost. And I think uh, over the feedback, uh, over the course of the last uh, couple of months, we do get a lot of uh, very positive feedback from our customers. And we also gain a lot of new customers along the way because uh, we, our ability to remain the supply uh, without disruption is one of the key measure. And of course, uh, when you come to cost perspective, uh, still buying is one key uh, area that we focus on. On the other area, we're also focusing on the processes. So uh, as you can see in the uh, in presentation, uh, a lot of the key processes already been streamlined and Grife is embarking or continue to look at continuous improvement, how we can remain very competitive in this market. And, uh, by introducing also new products like uh, what Alan uh, showed about digital printing, we hope to be able to bring more value to our customers uh, and therefore uh, be able to add value to our customers' product in your packaging needs. Yeah, so I hope that answers your questions. Uh, so I turn it back to Wei Guan. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Ki Yang. Um, next question. Uh, this is uh, spe specifically coming from China. So I'll have Leo to address. Uh, the question is, is anti-counterfeit treasure available for China and can they be made in China? Over to you, Leo. Leo, are you on mute? Oh, sorry. And uh, actually, uh, thank you, we go on. As, as you mentioned, as uh, any counterfeit uh, we, uh, product we can, uh, it's available in China. Actually, uh, it's, um, as I have mentioned, we have uh, QR code, we have new product which uh, can be used for the anti-counterfeit uh, market. So that's, um, right now we can import from the, the, the Europe and we are um, um, developing to um, install this, um, a product in China soon. And last but not least, I want to say, um, uh, I saw that there are many Chinese customers. If you have any questions, you can ask in Chinese. Thank you, everyone. Right. Uh, um, I'd like to take this time to address uh, some questions which is uh, common in nature. A lot of you want to know uh, specifically, like in each individual individual countries, what are the available steel products uh, that we can provide? Um, I just want to say uh, along my presentation, you can see uh, each site has its core product, which is 260 16 liters uh, large steel drum. That will be the core product across all drive sites in APEC. But 
uh, as I shared earlier, like for instance in Singapore, we produce the small medium drums as well as the bitumen. And then in China also produce the, the uh, composite and Malaysia also produce the composite drum. So in that aspect, right, we, we take it as Grive as a one company. We are able to provide all this solution across uh, all the countries in APEC. So I would say that uh, although each site has its special specialty, specialization in, in certain products, but across APEC, we are able to support one another in terms of uh, solution for your local needs. Yeah. So I hope that uh, that will answer some, uh, most of your question with regards to what type of drums are available in each country. Okay. Right. So, uh, no more questions. I'd like to thank all of you for your questions. Uh, we want, we want yeah. to, uh, there, there's still a couple of questions. I, I think uh, we should address that. Um, sure. So, there's a question uh, whether any impact from weather if we down gauge to 0 0.8. So, maybe Alan can, can answer and supplement what you said earlier. Yes. Uh, what, uh, sorry, I didn't uh, catch a question. The... Um, the, uh, yeah, yeah, Alan, the question I read for you again, is there any impact from weather, so the environment, if we were to start ah, okay. to 0 0.8? Yeah. Uh, but, but during winter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's correct. It's, it's correct. If you are filling the drums at a very hot temperature and you close it down immediately, and then you uh, deliver the drums to, let's say, Siberia or a very, very cold country, then you could have some impression effect. But in fact, if you are using the W bits and uh, the corrugations in 0 0.8, you should be able to avoid uh, this, uh, this phenomenon. So there is a technical limitation for sure. So uh, you should consider where you deliver the drums. But that's, that's the only way. The weather, you really need to go to very, very cold temperature. And, uh, and, and that's it. All right. Okay. Thank you, Alan. We want to can take the next two questions. Uh, so the next question is, uh, I also just supplement on what I say earlier. Uh, the question is, can I know why steel price in uptrend uh, and in Asia region? So uh, as, I, as I mentioned, so on the steel material uh, supply and demand side, uh, definitely packaging use of steel is not the biggest sector. The biggest sector is actually automotive, and uh, we witness, uh, you know, a recovery or increase in demand from the automotive sector. So car producing uh, companies are actually uh, gearing towards more production, and therefore steel demand is on the way up. Uh, the other aspect is on the supply side. Uh, we see, uh, and in Asia, uh, the major steel suppliers are located in Northeast Asia. So Japan, Korea, Taiwan, plus China, and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, steel mills in this area. There are also quite a few re-rollers in other parts of Southeast Asia. And uh, over the course of the last six months or so, there were, there were some uh, you know, reduction in terms of capacity of the steel making uh, suppliers, uh, whether from the initial uh, reduction in demand or they have scheduled for uh, maintenance. And when a steel mill go into maintenance, usually it takes a couple of months and take capacity out. So when you balance this supply and demand, uh, it causes an uptrend, uh, and therefore that's what we are seeing in the market today. Uh, and as a continuation to that, also there's a question about uh, whether Grive has done hedging to reduce the risk regarding steel uh, raising cost uh, volatility. Uh, in this, this, this is a good question uh, because in so far as Grive is concerned, we are uh, in packaging business. So our, mode, our uh, business model is very much dependent on how we are going to make sure we supply to our customers uninterrupted. So we do not uh, engage in hedging activity per se. We can take a stronger position or weaker position depending on the steel price or the raising price movement. Uh, but we still need to make sure that we buy enough material to support our customer. So therefore, hedging is not something that we do. Uh, we, like I say, we do buy a bit more or a bit less depending on trend. And uh, our key objective is to convert this and then supply to our customers uninterrupted. So I hope that also answer that question. Yeah. So uh, we want um, back to you. Okay. Uh, we will look at the next question. 
Um, this one maybe will uh, let go away to uh, response, which is the question is, is there any plans for Grive to work on recondition of drums in the spirit of sustainability? Uh, the short answer for that we're going is yes. Uh, sustainability is very important to us. And then if you look at the regions in globally in North America, in Europe, a uh, reconditioned drum is a huge percentage of the total supply. Uh, in Asia, that number is very small. I think it's in the, in the teens. So, of course, we want to uh, explore this uh, opportunity. Uh, but given the current regulations and the difficulty to obtain licenses in some of the region, it is going to be a long road. So we're working with the suitable partners to uh, build this process, and then uh, hopefully in the future can offer this product. Back to you. Right. Okay. Right. Next question. Uh, maybe I can uh, try to Alan uh, to respond in terms of uh, Grive as a global. Um, how is our drum reusable after filling with liquids, and is the steel drum disposable and how to use it for reproducing new steel drum? Hello? At the end of the life, there are different ways to recycle the steel drums. So you have first the reconditioning your process. So there are two processes for to recondition uh, steel drums. The, the easiest one is the washing process. Uh, for easy products such as lubricants or solvents, you can just wash internally the drums and then you repaint the drums and you deliver again uh, recon drums. Uh, the second reconditioning process uh, for more difficult products which cannot be easy, easily washed is the furnace process. Uh, we, furn we cut the, uh, the head of the drums and we furnace totally uh, the drums to uh, destroy all the products inside. And then we put a new top and we produce again a drum. So that's uh, what we call the furnace drums in reconditioning. And the final step is uh, when you cannot do anything with the drum because it is too damaged or, or you cannot uh, use it again, then uh, we scrap the drums and the steel which is used uh, for, for which is scrapped is used by directly by the steel mills and so we can produce again new steel. But, but we, we cannot uh, just uh, scrap uh, steel drums and produce uh, only steel with this uh, steel scrap. It's always mixed with other steel scrap. Uh, but yes, the steel drums is a very good material for steel mills uh, in recycling. Okay. Thanks, Alan. Um, okay, then the next question. Uh, for those, if you have some more questions, please key in. If not, we will come to the last uh, question. Um, uh, this will be addressed by Chin Yang. Um, do you expect financial performance result of Drive uh, in Q3 to be better than Q2? Thank you, Egon, and thank you for the question. Uh, thank you for the interest in our financial health. Uh, Drive continue to be very uh, financially sound. Uh, and uh, considering the, the exposure or the business that we are in around the world, uh, whether in Europe, in US, and also the different substrate that we are in, whether it's in paper or in steel or in IBC or in plastics, I think we have a whole sex spectrum of uh, products uh, and uh, they are not equal. Uh, so uh, at the beginning of the COVID-19, we have China being impacted uh, due to the closure. And after that, I think it, the trend moved eastward, right? So slowly from, uh, uh, from China, it moves to uh, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, America, and so on. Uh, and I would say that uh, there, there's been mixture. So there are, there are actually some surprises that uh, we, we did not uh, expect. Uh, for example, in our production of uh, containers uh, for the support of uh, the medical industry, for example, uh, in the alcohol business, where it is used for, you know, uh, disinfectant, uh, used for the medical uh, industry. It, those are in huge demand, so there were some unexpected gains that helped boost our, our sales figure, which uh, in turn helped boost our financial numbers. But there are also other segments, which also we see there's a huge, uh, you know, decline in demand. Uh, and, but we see this uh, trend around the world uh, moving and shifting. Uh, and at this point in time, I think uh, uh, based on what is being asked, uh, Q3 and Q2. So uh, just to put a case in point is that uh, from our financial standpoint, 
our Q3 would mean uh, up to the month of uh, July. Yeah, because our financial year starts in the month of November. So uh, this month uh, is the second last month of our financial year. So if I were to compare our Q4, so August, September, October, uh, our financial Q4, we see a stability compared to our financial Q3. Uh, so I think uh, we have a mixture, there are ups and downs, uh, but overall I think there's been a very good control uh, and also very good uh, you know, in terms of uh, managing of our operation around the world. Uh, there was some impact in some countries uh, where we are also impacted by COVID-19 uh, and uh, some places had to undergo shutdown. But uh, I'm glad to say that in so far as Asia Pacific is concerned, uh, we, we did not stop any operation. We continue to supply throughout the entire COVID situation and therefore it helped us in our financial numbers. But I just want to say that uh, in so far as uh, Grife is concerned, uh, our financial are still very strong. Uh, and uh, I think we continue to remain committed to, supply, uh, to support our customers. Yeah. Uh, so I hope that gives you clarity in terms of our, uh, our financial uh, status. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Nia. So on, on that note, uh, we have not seen any more questions coming in. So on this note, we will uh, end the Q&A session. So thank you once again for all your questions. Today, I hope you have learned more about our steel drum production and as well as our value proposition. Yeah. However, this is not the end. Even after this presentation, should any question you have regards to our products as well uh, to this presentation, I urge you to reach out to your local sales contact for more information on or details, some details of our presentation. So I thank you all once again for joining us this afternoon in this webinar, and I hope that it has been useful for you. So thank you and uh, have a good day. Bye.